just to introduce our guests, they introduce themselves, of course. Danis Kanovic and Shadow McCuller. These guys come from the 27 countries of the United Europe, thanks to the Prelux uh, and the European Parliament. We suggested a topic for today, which is what is the role of the festivals? How do you feel with festivals? Are they interesting and useful for directors, producers, uh, and audience? But of course, every one of you, I suppose, have seen the movie yesterday. So you are totally free, like during these days, to be a real active audience. So I don't have any special question to start. So it's up to you. What I can remember is that just once I'm here not only like a sort of moderator, but uh, I can be involved in the discussion like a festival director. <laughs> so maybe I have a role uh, to play. Who wants to start? Good morning. I do have one general... Oh, can yeah. you introduce yourself? Sorry. Um, I am Torben. I am the guy from Luxembourg and um, I'm sitting in a very comfortable sh um, chair right now. And um, <laughs> <laughs> next year, maybe. Um, to me, film festivals um, are serving, or could serve, or should serve, um, a sort of qualification or labeling purpose, which is to say that, um, as we've discovered in discussions we had earlier on this week, that there's a massive output nowadays of, um, of films and so on, because making films became much faster, much cheaper and so on, but it still doesn't mean that the films which are being made are better um, from a from an offering point of view, from a script point of view, from an acting point of view. And so I think that film festivals can serve a very specific purpose of um, labeling films. For example, if, you, if you're having a look at the um, European um, film festivals, you have um, Venice, which is presenting like the big films in, in summer. You have Berlin, which is um, presenting the big films in winter. You have Cannes, which I'm not actually sure about the purpose of can. Um, <laughs> you have um, <laughs> you have um, Edinburgh, which is um, trying to find films of discovery. You have um, Sheffield for documentaries. You have special horror film festivals, and so on. So um, that an audience, which has now a massive range to to choose from, can actually um, go by that label in which film festivals they um, they were selected. And um, then there's a question I have, which m might point to um, to Giorgio. We are sitting here in Venice under the sun, and it's all very nice, and we all, in well, sort of. It should be there somewhere, and we are enjoying ourselves really much, so film festivals are great. But if we are, quite from an audience point of view, quite honest to ourselves, do we ne really need that? Couldn't film festivals um, take place in like um, many festivals at the same time, which would make it um, cheaper, eco-friendlier. Could um, what we had with Cannes last year, there was an internet site called The Authors, which were presenting a special selection which was only available on the internet. Could film festivals in future um, decentralize and move um, towards maybe the internet, maybe towards <laughs> local cinemas? Because um, one of the constraints film festivals always had with festival films is that, especially for small films, maybe there's only one print, only two prints, which you can't distribute in all the, uh, uh, throughout the world. But now with the digital and um, media, this might be possible. Might this be a way? I think I will take this because this is extremely important question for a producer. <coughs> Danis will tell you his own experience with festivals. But you know, <coughs> in my career, which started here in Italy and, and, and it started really in Venice, and uh, I must say that today the festivals are essential for the cinema. Internet is our biggest enemy because of piracy. And we still do not know, being these uh, new medias and new ways of making movies being more and more uh, turned towards digital, 
in all the theaters in France, the biggest change that starts only with digital screenings from October of this year. As long as we do not resolve that, I think that this business of making movies is in extreme danger. We do not know what will happen to us in the next few years or in the next few months even. You know, there are new ways of promoting movies now. Everybody counts on, on, on internet. First victim of internet is DVD. The DVD market and DVD sales, which was 60% of all our revenues about a few years ago, now is completely collapsing. There's no DVD market anymore. And we did not create anything that can help us with the new market, what to do and how to do it. France is trying to make it, because I work in France and, and I produce out of Paris, the company we have together with Anis. Uh, they are trying now to, 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 to police the internet, but policing the internet is not the real thing. And I think that when you see the movie on Super 35, anamorphic cin uh, in cinemascope as we had yesterday, and you see it on that screen, nothing can ever be like that. And you know, we are spending a lot of money to make the best sound possible and then people wants to watch it on their iPhone. And nobody wants to watch on the iPhone the content which is made for iPhones. They all want to see the movies which open in the cinemas with the stars which cost a lot, or even the smaller films which are made for the big screen. They all want to see it on a small screen. And the festivals are the windows, the only window we have today to show the movies as they're intended when we produce them. And that's why we thank festivals that they exist. I think that there are festivals that can be one festival a day in all the year. And for my opinion, I much prefer the festivals which are in big cities. This is a little handicap, I think, of Venice and also of Cannes, because Cannes, some of you certainly went to Cannes. It's an incredible mess, but it's still the most important and the most difficult festival to access, that festival can make and can destroy authors. Danis is one of the authors which were discovered and went all the way in his life, thanks to, 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 to Cannes Film Festival. I was very afraid, and Danis can tell you, when we were selected for competition, you have to play games, you have to be diplomatic, you have to push them so that they will consider the film for, com for competition but you have to have your own experience with festivals. And on Friday night, uh, before Friday morning, I mean Friday night and Saturday morning, Danis was a completely unknown guy who came from Bosnia with his first film. And on Saturday night, he was a star. So without a... F <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and, and this is something that we should never forget. And none of the festivals is too small not to be considered. Every festival, if the, if the movie is correctly presented and presented with love of people who are curating the festival, as Giorgio does, can be extremely important. I think it's not extremely, it's, it's essential. For me, the biggest problem of big festivals, the biggest problem of big festivals is that the press is seeing the movies not with the audience. And a lot of our destiny depends on what the reviews will be with the films. And I remember when I first went to Cannes 35 years ago, I was full of enthusiasm and I was at that time a film critic for some of Yugoslav newspapers. And we were watching films together with the audience. You had little coupons that they would cut before you make these seven steps, which were only seven at that time in Cannes, in the old Palais. And what today in Cannes is called Carré du Cinéma, which is the part on parterre, which is reserved for the most famous producers, actors, and guests of the festival, was reserved for the press. So the press had the reaction of the audience. What they are doing now? They're sitting in the present industry screening, meaning your dist future distributors, etc., etc., are sitting together with the press. They discuss immediately about it. They find nearly always a common opinion about the film. So they destroy it or they raise it. 
but they have absolutely no idea how the audience is going to react. And so I think that this is something which never will change, I think, because of organization of the festivals, of logistics of the festivals, etc., etc., the logistics of the newspapers, which have to see the film in advance. But this is something which I always felt as a huge, huge handicap, that they do not uh, assist to your beautiful screening as we had yesterday, and that they do not feel how the people reacted. And we make movies for these people, and press is the filter that made it possible to get to the audience and to the people, and very often that filter is just closing your access to the audience. When you are a blockbuster, American films, etc., etc., which Venice is one of the of the main, 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 also uh, how do you say trampolino, the uh, st starting point for these movies, which I don't think it's so necessary. You know, Venice is like pre Deauville. We have the Deauville American Film Festival, and they come to Venice, and then they go to to, to Deauville, and they finish their European promotion for the opening season of Christmas and Christmas openings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And and these films already have access because they have money, they invest in prints and ads and so-called P&A, et cetera, et cetera. And the movies is our film. It was a blessing for us to be here. Even though Georgia said yesterday that he was happy and proud that we were in Sarajevo first, because it's a Bosnian film, Bosnian language, Bosnian topic, Bosnian director, whatever you want. And I fought like crazy to have the world premiere in, 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 in Sarajevo. And then what you have, you have newspapers, they call them trades, which are like Variety Screen, Hollywood Reporter, who saw them there. And it's maybe our fault, I don't know, that they just did not get the film completely. And so you do not know where to present yourselves because the main thing is what they are going to say, what the, the, the critics are going to say. Unfortunately, or fortunately for us, we are not making film for critics, but you have to count with us. And the festivals in good and the bad are good because you expose yourself also towards these critics, towards the reviews, and you get what you have to. The festival directors are human beings. They're not machines. They're diplomats. They're opportunistic. They're lovers of cinema. They're ego monsters, whatever you want. And you have to count with that. And if they were not there, I think most of the movies Nobody would ever hear about.